Hello, my friends from all over the world. Today we have another show interviewing Mrs. Kellyanne Ebert. She's a qualified nurse from Western Australia. She's running for a seat in the parliament as a Senate, right? Um, yep. My name is Ramon Granados. We are broadcasting from Perth, Australia, and I hope you will enjoy our following interview. Hello, Kelly. Welcome to Hemp Engineering. Hi, Ramon. How are you today? I am, nice. I am very good, to tell you the truth. Um, a little bit disappointed with uh, certain personal things and the, my cannabis use, but uh, I'm very sure that I will overcome this um, uh, situation very shortly. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. I hope you do. Yes. Kelly, um, you are running for the next elections for a seat in the in, in our parliament in Western Australia. I have um, shared with many people around the world that uh, what we are doing in this country, especially in Perth, is a is a light and example to follow worldwide. We just created a party. Just a year ago, we already have two representatives. Um, I see that people such as yourself have been motivated and, and running to, to make our world a better place. But I do have a curiosity. How did you end up in the, in the hemp business? Or, or this, what motivated you to, to run for the parliament? Um, well, I... It was kind of an accident, really. <laughs> um, I was social media, Facebook. Um, they were looking for people to join the legalized cannabis, the WA party. Um, so I joined the party um, and, you know, they were getting into the election. And um, my partner was also joined the party and said, you know, come and have a look at this. Maybe put your name down. Maybe we should run. We don't have to do anything, you know, just put your name down. We just want to get on the ballot kind of thing. And, got involved from there and then became really into the campaigning as cannabis has saved my life um, since I started using five years ago, um, replaced all medications, uh, pharmaceuticals, bar one, like I do admit there is one, um, but um, you know, instead of about five. So I fell in love with advocating for the cause because people need to know basically. But it was an accident. I was just browsing one day and thought, yeah, that looks like a good idea. Something that I do often. Well, sometimes accidents are for, for good. Most of the best things in life has come from accidents, you know, including the penicillin and most medicines and a lot of things, uh, technology. For sure. Uh, yes, yes. Everything happens for a reason. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but. Uh, I guess in this uh, journey has that changed your life and now looking to represent our people and has um, opened you a different perspective of cannabis is actually is. Um, it's not just a recreational or medicinal um, uh, drug, I guess, say that it's also it's got a huge component of, of social, technological, economic, and political aspect that includes the industrial part, which I am very sure you are aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, what would be your proposal to, to help to make a better war in the parliament? Our policies regarding cannabis um, are simple. It's the criminalization of cannabis is, it, it's about getting it decriminalized basically. Also creating jobs, yes. saving money, um, promoting safety about cannabis, not just let's legalize it and let everyone do what they want with it. We want to actually um, 
monitor the use of that, um, such as things like alcohol and tobacco, um, and they're taxed and regulated. Um, I don't see why they can't be, why cannabis can't be regulated the same. Um, specifically when it's used as a medication and there's more addictive pharmaceutical medications available um, at a much cheaper price, may I add as well, um, that are much unhealthier options and people don't even have the option to choose cannabis at the moment and some people don't even know about it. So um, my aim is to make sure that everybody is aware that they have a choice for one and that that choice isn't a bad thing, that people can't look down on you for that choice. Um, um, democracy is about choice. And I would responsibly say that uh, the, the United States have imposed a global dictatorship on regard to cannabis. Um, hmm. Most politicians on earth simply follow that without even knowing, without even being aware why they are against the drug or, or marijuana or cannabis or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it is a stigma that we need to fight or unite it to change it because people are not guilty that they don't know. We have been exposed to a systematic 80 years of prohibition supported by uh, media that have brainwashed most people, while at the same time, a very few privilege that knows exactly how to get away out of the system, they keep getting the benefit of it. I guess the most, the, from my perspective, the people who are most getting the most benefit out of the provision are the ones who are actually telling the whole world don't touch it, you know, because people are keep touching it. But, but on the other hand, Kelly, he, he, I believe that your work and the, our politicians that will be soon elected, yes, um, dismantling this uh, social structure will be as easy as the way it was, it was imposed the United States has been dismantling this very rapidly. They are, as they, as they impose it, now they are, they are getting away out of it and they're doing it exactly the way you're telling. They are doing it, they're giving laws, they're being much more flexible, they're putting tax on it and it's working. It's working very fine. In Canberra, it's working very fine. People are, it's free, so I don't even understand what is holding back, you know. It's, it's a simple matter of somebody said no, so everybody else says no, but nobody actually remembers why anyone said no in the first place. And I'm sure the reasons date back to money. And what is sad is we can make more money for the economy with the plant to start with all the farms that are going to be helping the economy, all the jobs that, that that's going to create in all the states, um, you know, in the actual growth industry, well, then we're in control of our own supply as well. Um, we can become exporters rather than importing in. Yes. Um, creates jobs, it creates environment. There's a million other uses for hemp than a medication to smoke as well like hemp creates um, uh, hemp material. Fuel. Hemp. Fuel, exactly. Yeah. Um, the skincare lotions I've been using lately, I've been seeing them everywhere, hemp, and it's amazing. I would recommend it over any other skincare cream at the moment. It's, it's beautiful. Hemp is the most amazing thing that was created, and it's sitting there, and it's illegal. You grow it in your backyard, and you're a criminal. Um, most people I know don't look like criminals or what you would classify as a criminal. So I don't know where they get this idea from. Like there's a much better time that the police could be spending these much better, much worse criminals in the world than just, yes. you know, a plant. Like, come on guys, like, what are you even doing? Why are we saying no still? 
Well, those are questions that time will allow us to understand it. Once we get more politicians such as yourself to in the parliament and help us to assemble a system that is not working for nobody, for no one. That's a headache. And, uh, um, no, that's what we hope. I hope to be a voice for the people that are not heard at the moment in regards to cannabis. Well, um, I'm very sure that with the passion and the emotion that you are putting in your words, um, you will reach the heart of the people. Um, and I guess your strategy to gain uh, supporters is just a matter of um, putting it in place, um, which is at the end of the day, the democracy allow us uh, to use that tool to change what we don't want. That's the whole bottom line. Kelly, what would you tell the decision, the decision makers in this moment? In this moment, get your act together. And if you don't have a reason why not, then just let it happen. Let us grow. Let us use, let us grow and regulate it like alcohol and tobacco. Then you guys get your money too. And then everyone is happy. The world is a much happier place. But in this example, Australia is a much happier place. It is. It is. It is. Uh, yes. Compared if with not, the why not? I said, if not, why not? If yeah. not, why not? Simple question without evasion. If not, why not? And if it's not us, who else? Huh? That's it. <laughs> Kelly, what a great pleasure having you in my show. I will do all my best to spread this word around. I am also the mem a member of the, of the party. Um, Excellent, thank I, you. I want the best for ourselves. Um, Kelly, I am very sure that uh, with your beauty, your passion, your there is nothing that will let us gain that food for you. Um, and there is I'm so really hoping. Food. I'm running for this seat in Northern Territory alongside Lance Lawrence, who is a very seasoned um, cannabis advocate for the last 40 plus years. And he's also um, sat in Senate uh, for the Greens, I believe it was. He's been involved in the activist scene for a very long time anyways. Um, very, very honored to be running again, uh, not against him, with him, sorry. Um, he's probably the one better than talking, at oh. talking. But yeah, he's a great guy. But oh. I appreciate your time and uh, patience with me. I'm not the greatest when it comes to interviews. No, um, but um, unfortunately, social media is the new future and um, people are gonna be seeing my face around a lot um, in the next coming month before the election. So um, vote one the leaf. No one pays for you, my friend. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Ramon.